Hi, let's take a look at multi-step synthesis and we'll do it in the context of electrophilic aromatic substitution. Those reactions that add groups or substitute groups onto a benzene ring. Okay, and for multi-step synthesis there are some boundaries um, that you should be aware of. What you need to do is ultimately begin with acetylene, benzene, or simple alcohols and simple alcohols are defined to be uh, molecules that contain four carbons or fewer and only one hydroxyl group, one OH group. And you can build all the carbon atoms in your final product using just those three categories, acetylene, benzene, and simple alcohol. That doesn't mean you can't use any other carbons for your reagents, it just means that any carbons that end up in your product have to ultimately be synthesized from from those three categories. We need to make this molecule and it has a, a fluorine atom, a nitro group, and a sulfonic acid group. And I think the first thing I would do is just kind of recall those reactions that put those three groups onto benzene. And if we want to put the fluorine on and let's take note of where it is, it's on the left hand side. I want to put that onto the ring, beginning with benzene, that weird, one weird reagent, um, that triethylene diamine uh, with the BF4 reagents, and there's the abbreviation for it. also need to recall the reaction that puts, puts a nitro group on the ring. That would be nitric acid and sulfuric acid. And then finally, we need to recall the reactions that put on, sorry, the reagents that put on the sulfonic acid group. That would be SO3 and sulfuric acid. Okay, and next, we need to sequence this in the correct order. We need to you know, put these reactions in the correct order so we get the groups on benzene in the correct positions. And what this really means is you got to recall your ortho para directing groups. And we have to have a sense of which ones are more activating than others. So the most activating are at the top of our list. And it begins with the amines. Doesn't have to be NH2 connected to a benzene ring. Could be with a methyl. You have two methyls on the nitrogen, whatever. Or you can start with phenol or phenol. Those are the most activating groups. Changing the amine to an amide. Or you can put um, an alkyl group on to the phenol and make an ether. So I'm just going to put a methyl group on there. But it doesn't have to be a methyl. It could be any, any number of carbons. And then going to even less activating, weakly activators. Those are alkyl groups on the benzene ring or a one benzene ring connected to another benzene ring. Then the last of the ortho directing groups are the halogens. And those are weakly deactivating. Okay, so the weakly deactivating um, groups, what that means is that when these are present on the ring, they tend to slow the reaction down relative to pure benzene. We need to memorize this list, and the assumption is if there are any other functional groups on the benzene ring, they're going to be the strongly deactivating groups, and they're going to be meta-directing. Let's just go through the list. Fluorine. Fluorine is one of the halides. ortho directing weakly deactivating and so fluorine is saying hey new group go ortho to myself or go across the ring at the pair position nitro nitro is not on the list so we're going to assume it's a strong strongly deactivating meta director so relative to the nitro group go over to the meta positions and that's what nitro is saying saying hey new group you need to go meta to myself. Sulfonic acid, also not on the list, so it's also a strongly deactivating meta director. So we're getting closer. <laughs> now that we know where these groups direct, we need to put these reactions in the correct order so that the incoming groups are directed to the right spots. We got three reactions. You can try all the different combinations of putting those three, three reactions in different orders, or we can try and you know reason it through and get it right the first time rather than waste some time through trial and error. Let's see, if we look at what fluorine is doing and compare where the groups are, we can see that the nitro group is not being directed to the correct spot. 
So what you don't want to do is put fluorine on first because you're not going to be able to get the nitro group to the correct location. But what's nitro doing? Nitro is directing to this position where the fluorine's at. Hey, so that might not be a bad idea. Maybe we could put the nitro group on and that will direct the fluorine to the correct location. Before we get started on that, let's just look at the sulfonic acid group. Sulfonic acid group is going meta to itself. Um, that's these two positions. And there's nothing there. Okay, so the sulfonic acid group is not going to be directing anything. All the action is going to begin with either nitro or fluorine, and it looks like it's nitro. So, put the nitro group on first. So we're going to start here, make this second. Put on the fluorine next. Now that fluorine's in place, let's see what happens if we put on the sulfonic acid group. That's how we would, well, hopefully, it's going to work. Now check your answer. If we have fluorine over here and a nitro group over there, which one is going to determine where the sulfonic acid group goes? Fluorine's right here, and the strong deactivators are below that. So the more activating group gets to determine where the new group goes. So fluorine wins. So fluorine decides. And fluorine says, well, go ortho to myself or go para. And hey, that's where we need the sulfonic acid the group to go. It needs to go para. We're done. That's enough. You want to just leave all this work on the page for me to look at? That looks great. Otherwise, you could circle this and say, hey, Dennis, there's my answer. And I'll say, awesome, full credit. Oh, notice that even though you're going to get the fluorine to direct the sulfonic acid group to this position, you can ignore that for multi-step synthesis. We're just going to assume that, yes, when you do this in lab, you're going to get both products, this one and this one, and then we'll have to clean it up. We'll have to separate them and purify them so that we only get the product we want. Okay, here's a second problem. We've got this crazy-looking molecule. So let's tackle it the same way. First, let's decide what reactions get the functional groups that we need. And then secondly, let's decide in what order do we want to run those reactions in order to produce the product. Start again with benzene. That's legal. And we'll put the iodine on the bottom left. So, got to recall that. That's I2CuCl2. Now on the exam, if you just had a mental block and you can't think what the reagents are, well, then make your best guess, but don't let that um, stop you. If you. Even though you can't remember the reagents, you can still say, hey, I'm going to go from here to there, and then keep on going with your synthesis, right? Go after partial credit, and as much partial credit as you can get. And then maybe you can look through the rest of the exam, see if you can see something that reminds you what the reagents are. Well, ethers can be made by SN2 reactions. So we have that reaction where you have the anion of, a, of an alcohol, maybe it's sodium cation, and we treat it with a primary or maybe a secondary alkyl halide or just a methyl halide. Bromine is my favorite halide, but it doesn't have to be bromine, chlorine, or some other good leaving group. And the mechanism SN2 is a lone pair on the nucleophile, strikes the carbon, and at the same time the leaving group breaks away, and that connects the oxygen to the carbon. Okay, so how do we make this ether? Well, we can let this part of the molecule be our oxygen with the negative charge. And let's see. We can just omit the iodine because we don't know what order we want to put this in there. So maybe the iodine's in place when we're doing the reaction, or maybe we'll put the iodine last. Not certain at this point. Or you know what? We don't even have to put the benzene on yet. So, I don't know. Let's just look at this part of the molecule connected to the oxygen. So, let's see. Can I get them both on the screen? Yes. So, we got... We have these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 carbons. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then put the halide here. So that could put that group in place, that ether, rather. What's the other thing we can do? Well, we could say that the oxygen would be here, attached to that, those five carbons. So 
So one, two, three, four, five. And then we put the halide on the other end, put it on the ethyl group. And link them up like that. Okay, so we have some choices on the ethers. The ether is an oxygen connected to two carbons. Let's see what else. It's getting really messy. Let's redraw this. Okay, we also have to connect the benzene ring to these five carbons. Well, we got this big clue over here. Here's those five carbons. And we can connect them to the ring through this acid chloride. All right, how do we do that? How do we do that? By Freo Crafts reaction, right? The acid chloride with aluminum chloride here will link the benzene ring to the carbon at the point where the chloride is. There we go. Okay, so we have several reactions here to get the groups on where we want them. The Freo Crafts reaction, we have the iodine substitution reaction here, and we have SN2 reactions. Okay, so now we need to sequence them together in the right order. Okay, so here are the reactions on the left. Here's the final product on the right. We need to put these in the right order. Well, you know, we got that hint that we can use this acid chloride. So we know we got to put that reaction in place. And, of course, the iodine's got to go in place by this reaction. And then we have the ethers, and we have choices there. We don't have to do both. Well, a couple things to consider, just kind of get our brains moving here. Um, what kind of directing group is an is a ketone? Actually, this is an aryl ketone. A ketone attached directly to the benzene ring. Well, got to look at our list of orthopara directing groups. Well, let's look at our list of orthopara directing groups and. This kind of looks like ketone. No, it's not a ketone. It's an amide. Okay, so ketones are not on the list. So the assumption is they're meta directors, strongly deactivating. How about iodine? Well, it's on the list. It's a weakly deactivating orthopara director. Okay, so the ketone is going to direct meta to itself. That's over here and here. And the iodine is going to go ortho to itself or para. And if we look at the final product, those two groups are para. Okay, so the iodine's got to go on first, followed by the acid chloride, by the field cross reaction. Iodine first. Let's see, is the ether going to interfere? Do we want to put the ether on first? No, no, that would mean somehow changing this molecule to an ether, and then it won't do the field cross. We need it to be an acid chloride, right? Okay, so we need the carbon oxygen and double bond with the chlorine in order to, for the friedel crafts reaction to work. And then after that, we're going to have to think about how to change that double bond O to make the ether. So it looks like, start with the iodine, put on the acid chloride, and then we get this aryl ketone with the iodine. And we're getting close to the product. Okay, now what? Well, need to get rid of this double bond. And then maybe this oxygen on the ketone could be the oxygen um, of the ether. doesn't have to be, but that's a possibility. So we look at our two choices over here, and it looks like, it looks like this one here. If you want to keep this oxygen to be the same oxygen, you could think about changing the double bond to a single bond and maybe also make it a negative. 
and then we could add the um, ethyl bromide to complete the synthesis. And it turns out you can get partial credit for this route, but we haven't yet discussed the reaction that changes a ketone to the anion of an alcohol, or actually an alcohol. It turns out that's going to be sodium borohydrate. We'll see soon enough. But we don't have that yet. So instead, what you want to do is think about getting rid of that dull bono and making it the halide. Hmm. Well, how do we get rid of the aryl ketone? And you want to get rid of the oxygen too, since we're going to change it into bromine. Well, you can hydrogenate it. H2 with palladium or platinum. That'll make this an alkane. And then we can add NBS. There we go. So now if we put the bromine at the secondary carbon, then we can add the anion of this alcohol and get our SN2 reaction to make the final product. Okay, so it looks like we got our path. Let's go back and make sure everything is legit in terms of legal starting materials. So it says we can start with benzene. Check, we start with benzene. Um, this normally is not a legal starting material. These carbons are going to show up in the final product. So normally we would have to make this. However, this problem said you can start with this, kind of the exception, right? There we go. Said we could start with it. That's okay. Okay, so no high, no carbons in this reaction. NBS has carbons, but none of the carbon atoms from NBS show up in the product, so you don't have to make NBS. Oops, these two carbons. These two carbons show up in the product, so you have to make these from acetylene, benzene, or an alcohol. A simple alcohol, four carbons or fewer. Sure, just make it from ethanol. How do you make it? Well, you need to remove the hydrogen. What removes hydrogens? Bases. So you need a strong base. You can't use sodium hydroxide. That sets up um, an equilibrium and that doesn't really remove that hydrogen completely to make this reaction viable. Um, we need a stronger base. So how about sodium amide? And then the sodium here will be a counter ion if you want to keep that in your reagents. And hey, this is a SN2 reaction. It will uh, add a little DMSO, a polar aprotic solvent to help our SN2 reaction go a little faster. There we go. I think we got it. Thanks for watching.